Welcome to my updated Wilderness Slayer Guide for 2022. My previous Wilderness Slayer Guide from last year covers the majority of your Wilderness Slayer needs. However, this video will include additions like bank layout, the additional tasks that have also been added in 2022, and looting Laren's keys. So stick around if you are planning on doing any Wilderness Slayer, this guide will be sure to help you with the new tasks, tips, and tricks. Be sure, of course, if you're new to Wilderness Slayer to check out the original video from last year in the description. A lot of it is still completely up to date. Let's get into it. This is how my bank tag layout looks like. So if you are unfamiliar with bank tag layouts, get it on RuneLight. If you use RuneLight, if you, do, if you don't use RuneLight, first of all, use RuneLight. Get RuneLight, scroll down in the settings until you see Plugin Hub. Click on the Plugin Hub. All of the plugins on Plugin Hub are confirmed to be safe by RuneLight. They just are not, there, there could be bugs in it. And that's why they're on the Plugin Hub rather than on the official list. So get Bang Tag Layouts. And this is how I personally set up my Wilderness Slayer tab. If I'm gearing up, I can just go down this list like this. And then I grab my Bracelets of Slaughter or Expeditious Bracelets, depending on the task. So sometimes I'll grab like three or so, and then I'll just gear up. And this is enough to fully gear. Generally, I bring a Bone Crusher necklace. A lot of people choose to bring an Anguish over it, but I prefer Prayer Bonus. It shares similar accuracy with the Anguish. I guess this one does have plus five additional. But this one does keep the plus ten, and it has plus twelve Prayer, which is insane. It saves so many Blighted Restores. It, I guess it really is up to you. The Anguish will give you a max hit in some situations more than one max hit, but I would definitely just keep the prayer bonus. Plus, if you're on a task where there's bones being buried, this automatically buries them and gives you prayer restoration. So definitely something to consider. Now, down here is where I set up my gnome seed pods. So almost every single task, I will click down here, click a few cannonballs. Generally, I'll pull out like 500 to 1,000. And then if my task is a demon or something that drops ashes, I will click the ash scatter and the looting bag. So this is generally what my, my first row looks like. And then of course I bring my potions out. And usually these are the amount of potions I bring. Blighted Ice Axe are also a super nice addition. And Mystics for jelly tasks. It's the only task you'll be using Mystics on. And so I definitely keep that. If you have a Kodai, definitely bring that for some mage tasks. And of course your cannon. And I have a Lasser Teleport here just to reclaim my cannon for when I get PK'd. Now let's talk about the Wilderness Slayer Cave. This has been a thing for a couple years now, and it has been recently updated as of 2022. So there are some new rooms. Abyssal Demons, that is a brand new task here. Greater Necreals on the western side as well. Jellies and Dust Devils, these are the brand new four tasks. They are Slayer Creatures which means that there will be superiors, and superiors guarantee a Laren's Key drop if you ever get one. Black Demons have had their stalagmites removed from the middle of the room, and so have Ankus, so the cave is fucking awesome now. The only downside, as you guys probably know if you listen to my rambles, is that these the, the entire cave is multi, first of all, and the exits lead to multi, so... I wouldn't really plan on being able to escape most of the time if you get caught <laughs> with some PKers, which is why you need to be alert at all time and get ready to telly. Last month, Jagex added a new secondary drop table to every single monster in the Wilderness Slayer Cave, and this drop table is exactly what's in the LMS store. So it's very interesting, and the rate of getting one of these drops is extremely high. This is coming from the Greater Necreals. It's a 92 out of 100 chance. Blighted sacks are really nice. I only take the Ancient Ice sacks as like the really good thing for Iron Men. Uh, blighted restores, food is always welcome. And then you got a bunch of teleports. The Wilderness Crabs teleport is definitely my favorite. It's definitely the most expensive as well. Because these you could actually make on your own, whereas the Wilderness Crab teleport can only exclusively come from drops or the LMS store. And of course, you also got the Magic Shortbow scroll, Ring of Wealth scroll that imbues your Rings of Wealth, and the Trover parchment, as well as looting back notes. So these are very rare, as you can see, they get progressively more rare, but it is a very common thing to just get a bunch of supplies, which is increasing your GP per hour if you're a main. And just giving you some nice lootations for your bank if you're an Iron Man. These teleports will definitely come in handy for clue scrolls and other things in the future. Now let's go into the Wilderness Slayer Cave. 
Firstly, I'm going to show you the rooms that have been updated. And then I'm going to show you new improvements that I've made on past rooms from the previous guide. And then I'll show you the four brand new rooms that include the four new Slayer creature tasks. I did say in my previous Wilderness Slayer guide that Black Demons I blocked. A lot of uh, people kind of disagreed with that. At the time, there was stalagmites in the room, like right in the center of the room, which is just absolutely obnoxious, which is why I just always skip that task. But now that they've removed all the stalagmites from the middle, I do black demons, and it's a pretty damn good task now. There's four that spawn. It's a little bit unfortunate. Oh, looks like there's somebody here. I'm fucking dipping. Fuck that. Fuck that. All right, we back. <laughs> we hopped worlds. And uh, so here is where I personally put my cannon. Uh, these these marked tiles right here. So again, always go northeast of the cannon. So I place it right here. And you might think, oh, that's not quite in the middle. This is actually probably the best spot that I've personally seen. And then again, because these are three by three monsters, it's very important that you stand right here. And the reason that is, is because, uh, of course, initially it doesn't end up like this, but these spots are the double hit spots, these little shaded areas. And so, generally, as soon as things start dying, they come to you in a way where they're southwest tiles on these shaded marks, generally. And they get the double hit, so it's just more efficient. So, this is pretty much this task. It's a lot nicer now that there's not, no garbage in the middle of the room. And yeah. Okay, in my previous 2021 guide, I did say to hide behind this wall right here. But, I've gotten a little bit just more comfortable being in the middle of the room. Pretty much because you can just telly out instantaneously you just got to be paying attention so this is now the spot where i set my cannon this spot will will uh, be able to reach all the lesser demons and uh, they won't lose aggro on you as long as you're underneath it or like a little bit north of it so this is pretty much this task it's it's very basic good laren's keys because simply because it's in the cave and uh, there's no hard clues either so i didn't bring enough cannonballs but uh generally what you want to do is just bring enough cannonballs for the entire trip so Easy tag. Ooh, there we go. With greater demons, there's actually a new spot I use. I still have the original spots highlighted where I'd set my cannon here. Stand here and let the cannon kill the uh, demons that would aggro. And this is a nice spot because it does prevent you from getting teleblocked immediately. But I have switched. Even when I made my wilderness guide, I still occasionally use this spot. I think this is the absolute most optimal but it does require you to insta -telly. If you ever see anybody, you gotta insta -telly because of the fact that you can get TB'd pretty damn instantly. If you see a name that logs in right here, they, they will try to telly block you as soon as possible. So I will show you the spots. Here it is. This is the tile you want to mark. Um, again, like you'll just have to count. You'll have to pause the video and count how many tiles it is away from the wall. But the spot I'm standing, and this is with all three by threes, by the way. So these monsters are actually three by threes. As you can tell, with all 3x3s, what you want to do is stand on the northeast corner of the cannon. And uh, this is just the most optimal, simply because every single greater demon can aggro you on this square. This is one of the only squares in the entire room where every single one will aggro you. W meaning that loot will generally spawn in the middle, rather than having loot outliers like this. This occasionally happens when you, you know, go and pick up loot over here and then one of the monsters runs. But for the most part, you want to be standing on this tile. And this is now my improved, I should say, little spot for the greater demons. In my previous guide, as I've stated many times, I actually did not do ice giants. And simply because I forgot that there is even a portion of the cave where you can kill ice giants. So uh, it's not like the best task ever. Plus, they kind of lose aggro. There's no real good spot to put the cannon, but it's still worth it to do this task if you're going for Laren's Keys. It's like, all right, it's not my favorite at all, but I will still do it simply because it's it's worth it for the Laren's Keys, I guess. And if you're trying to build up a little bit of points, this is where I go. Unfortunately, like the one over here never really comes to you unless you're kind of over here. It's a little rough, but anyway, I do this task now. All right, I got to be honest, Ankus have gotten a little annoying. I actually have grown to despise this task. Even with the random stalagmites being removed, this place used to be, like, just horrible. Now it's, you know, it's all right, but I definitely choose to expedite this task, which is why I bring Expeditious Bracelets, 
basically I set my cannon here. I don't think there really is a specific uh, spot. Of course, I'm on a 2200 world, so there's constant freezing, but I can't be fucked right now. There's a team of like 10 out right now in the normal world, so I just hop. Remember, every time I get a Anku task, I always highlight dark fishing bait. I turn it off generally because there are some tasks like zombies that give very few, like three, and I just can't be asked seeing all the spam on the ground. So I'll turn it off. But whenever I get Nanku, I'll turn it back on. Now, if you are planning on doing a bunch of two tick crabs later on in the future, you definitely want to slaughter these. But like I already have like 50,000 bait and I highly doubt I will even use up 50,000. So at this point, I just expedite it. It's still a pretty damn fast task, which is why it's not worth it to really skip it. There's good hard clues. There's good uh, Laren's key. I mean, not great, but it is in the Wilderness Slayer Cave. And so this is pretty much how I do this task now. Okay, we've been assigned jellies, which is a brand new task. This is the only task, however, where you'll be using mystics. I personally prefer mystics over black dehyde simply because these jellies do have mage level. And you just don't want to be splashing too often. So this is kind of the setup I bring. Of course, it's below 30 wilderness. If you see a PK, you can just insta dip. It doesn't really matter about your defense. Honestly, generally even food doesn't really matter because like with all these wildy slayer tasks, you want to be like just paying attention at all times and ready to dip. You don't want to chance yourself. You don't want to get tele blocked. You just want to leave. As soon as you see a red name, you want to dip. So this is the way I go. Of course, it's a really far trek. In fact, the way pathing works is you can only do a certain amount of different points to the point where like you can actually only click on the jelly room once you've passed here and then you can click and then you'll be able to get there i did not bring my cannon god damn it set up your spell to ice barrage again there are very few tasks i'm just gonna mute this for right now there are very few tasks where you will not be using uh, these blighted ancient ice sacks if there is a barrageable task there are some outliers abbey demons is one of them where you'll be using shadow barrage with your own runes it is just way better than ice barraging them but for the most part if they're not teleporting you around the room these ice sacks are wonderful keep in mind if you do have a kodai this kodai rune saving effect does apply to these ancient ice sacks so as you see when i barrage occasionally it'll save and it's just really cool. So if you have these ancient ice sacks, you get them here. And there. Look at that. I got a 10 drop right there. Of course, if you have your looting bag open, they will just directly go into the looting pouch. These jellies do not have the original jelly loot table. They have the warped jelly loot table. So it's the enhanced one from the catacombs. They are the exact same drop table. And the hard clue rate is fucking ridiculous in fact the two tasks i've had this is the third i've ever had because these tasks are weighted very low i'm on a rate right now of one in 15 like every 15 jellies i get a hard clue and i've gotten about 18 hard clues so it's pretty fucked i believe i don't think they fucked up i think i'm just getting very lucky but the hard clue chance is definitely at least one in 32 it's insane so you if you're into clue scrolls this task is definitely worth it and even if you're not into clue scrolls this task is 100 percent worth it for dust devil tasks that's my new task i got 228 of them the setup is bring a bone crusher necklace you can bring a a cult i guess but like i would highly recommend a bone crusher simply because well you could bring a bone crusher in your inventory but then you would lose it it's better to just bring this i think just because you will basically never run out of prayer because of all the bones that are constantly being buried plus the insane plus 12 prayer bonus so this is my setup i use the dark crab telly to get there whenever you enter the wilderness and you have those sacks in your inventory be sure to just set it up prematurely and then again there's not really a dedicated spot i found but this this spot works pretty damn good this is really similar to Jellies, where you just set the cannon down in AFK right in the center of it. And, of course, the cannon just continues to lure them all toward you. It's probably not the best bang for your buck when it comes to the ice axe, but, like, the amount of chillness is just, like, unreal. So I just sit here, you just cast away. So, big important thing here is these new Slayer rooms have non-aggressive monsters. Which means PKers are getting smarter. They're understanding that. And some of the time, PKers, instead of running from the outside in to TB you, they will spawn like over here. And you're not paying attention generally to over there. 
because they can do that because nothing's going to aggro them. They can just repetitively hop until they find somebody. So just be sure to keep an eye out on that because I have noticed it just recently that people are doing that. So make sure your player uh, player indicators are on for all players. Just make sure you're seeing everything. For this task, it's a bit obnoxious. What's cool about it is there's a bunch of superiors that generally spawn each task, at least one or two. And they're guaranteeing a Laren's key. But the obnoxious part about this task is the constant looting. It's like, I mean, I, I want to pick up 80 Chaos Runes, so I will go do that. I mean, currently I'm talking right now. But generally, this entire fucking time, I'm just spamming, like, the ground, trying to pick up every fucking rune. I don't really know if it's worth it, because clearly I'm losing a lot of DPS. But whenever you are looting, just keep in mind, the cannon is continually going, and it's gathering up more. So even though it feels like you're wasting time picking up shit... At least by the time you get back to start barraging again, there's more there. So this is pretty much this entire task. Again, you're just sitting here. Boom, Laren's key. Let's fucking go. Also, you don't get hard clues from these guys. I would say you can get about half of the task completed per trip. And that's simply because your bag will fill up very quick if you're looting everything. And uh, it'll fill up your inventory. So generally, I'll get about 100 kills. Maybe 120-ish. And then I'll go bank. And then I'll redo like the next little half. So... Fun task, like this is the choke devil. It's a little bit grayer. I guess I'm kind of used to the one in the catacombs that looks like really weird. But uh, yeah, let's see if we get anything. Of course, these always will drop a Laren's key, which is really awesome. And uh, I always just target the choke devil. I don't go out of my way to try to lure some up with it. I'd rather just get an additional chance at a superior afterward and kill as few as possible. So. There we go. There's our guaranteed Laren's key. Very nice. This is actually the first time I've ever had a Necreal task. I have been extremely dry on one, but we finally got one. 235. I'll be slaughtering this. I'll be using an occult because they don't drop bones. They drop ashes, so I bring my ash sanctifier. And uh, I'll be using the ice axe simply because they are a one-by-one one NPC with protect. Be sure to have protect item on. Now, I'm kind of figuring this out right now. I think I'm going to place the cannon right here. I think this is a good spot. This is honestly like the goat task that I've been waiting for simply because it is very rare to see a PKer like scouting this area. It's in relatively low wilderness. It's semi-easy to escape. I mean, not really. Anywhere in here is not really easy to escape. But the PKers are scouting over here. They're looking for abyssal demons. They're looking for lesser demons, black demons. But this is kind of out of their sight. And this task is also very rare. So this is probably, honestly, the greatest task you can get while doing Wilderness Slayer. So I'll just be using Ice Sacks. Again, if you don't have Ice Sacks, you can just use other runes. It doesn't really matter. Just stand underneath the cannon. The cannon will do the luring, and you just sit here and AFK. This is my first time getting the Necriarch, which is a little fucking monk ass. I believe I should just run and then return so I lose the aggro of the minions. I believe that's what you do. <laughs> a little scary because I don't actually have Blood Barrage. Now, if you are bringing actual runes, you can use Blood Barrage. But I think... I think how this monster works, as long as you're out of its melee range, it can't uh, summon those. So let's test it. Let's keep this firing as well. So again, I don't bother really stacking them up. I, I'm prioritizing just killing this exclusively. There we go. Guaranteed Laren's Key. We just got an Abyssal Demon task. This is a very fun task, but it's very dangerous. It's probably the most dangerous task, but it is the most rewarding. And it's, it's just a lot of fun as well. So... Basically, how I set it up, I do not use Blighted Ice Axe, although I will be barraging. I'll be using Shadow Barrage, so still barraging. How I do it is I pull out quantity, about 400. You can do less if you're scared of losing it, but for the most part, you should be safe if you're paying attention. With Shadow Barrage, it's 4, 2, 3, 4, as you see there. So what I'll do is I'll click 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 1, 2, 3, then 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have exactly the amount of runes to do 400 casts. You know, that might be overkill for you if you just want to take shorter trips, but bring the cannon, of course. Bring a couple brews. The thing is, is like if you get attacked, if you get teleblocked, you're dead. So it's not really worth bringing a shit ton of food. If you're if you're going to die, you're going to die. If you get TB'd, you're dead. So auto cast a shadow barrage. And the reason you're doing shadow is because you don't want your abyssal demons teleporting you around, them teleporting around, and on top of that, they're frozen in place. It's just... It's less efficient, so <clears throat> definitely use Shadow Barrage. This is better. 
this room that you're about to go to is half in level 30 and half in level 31 and higher. So I've drawn a line. This this little tile marker right here is the 30 line. You can be on that tile and you'll uh, be okay. So I set the cannon two tiles above it. And I'm going to show you exactly what I've learned through doing a few of these tasks and what I do to avoid getting teleblocked. There will be PKing scouters over there. So first of all, let's turn on my... Uh, let's turn this on and let's also uh, mute this. So here's the cool thing. You can just let your cannon go. And this is all you need to do. You will auto cast and it's just really fun. But what you want to do is you always want to be over here. If you ever go past 30, run over here. Just just do it. There will be PKers scouting from over there. And they can see your cannon rotating in the room. Which means they'll bring their four friends or five friends or eight friends. And they'll all come teleblock you. And if you're just AFKing too hard and you're out here, you'll get teleblocked. And you have no chance of using this Royal Seed Pod. So... This is where I remain. If I ever get tellied over over here, I instantly just go south again. And I'm ready to dip at any time. Make sure your player indicators are on. And just stay over here. This task is really good. I uh, tested the rates. It was about 70k XP an hour. Slayer XP an hour. Again, that could be higher or lower depending on like how efficient you can make this. But for the most part, you don't need to sweat too much. Be sure to bring your Ash Sanctifier for the extra prayer. It's a lot nowadays, so be sure to bring it. You can reclaim this, by the way. So if you do die, you can reclaim this Ash Sanctifier from the person at the Dark Altar. And all you have to do is just charge it with, like, I don't know, 200 Death Runes or something each time. And that'll give you 2,000 charges. So you're not really risking much. Just stay south of the 30 line and just keep AFKing. This is a really fun task. Like I was saying, you get a bunch of whips. You get superiors. You get Laren's keys up the ass. It's really nice. And they're just massive tasks with slaughter. So definitely one of my favorites. But again, stay below the 30 line and get ready to dip at any time. The best part of doing Wilderness Slayer is, of course, opening the Laren's keys. Generally, nobody's out here. What I do is I mark the ship's ladder. As most of you guys know, I am just missing a Dagon High hat. I've opened about 500 chests. Still no Dagon High hat. So we're just over twice the rate. But let's see if we can get it in this video. Oh my god. We actually fucking got it. Alright, that is full wilderness completion at 543 in the fucking video. Let's go. Oh my god. I guess I'll just open the, the, the final 13 and see if we can get a dupe. <laughs> that is full wilderness completion. Every single unique has now been obtained. And, uh... Very happy that I could get it on this little video, so... Yeah, uh, shit, I'm fucking happy. <laughs> Thank God. Alright, there we go, there, there it is. And, uh, very fucking happy. I'm gonna take a little screenshot post for the boys, and, uh, yeah, that was cool to get. Awesome. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as with all my guides, I always miss things. Feel free to post down in the comments below of things I missed, tips and tricks you use. It would help out a lot of my audience to go down in the comments and read what you found successful out there. But yeah, thank you guys so much. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.